All right, let's talk about web browsers. These programs allow you to navigate the web. They even let you customize your browsing with features like bookmarks, browser history, and choosing your own home page. An internet browser enables you to access the World Wide Web by using Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, and is specifically designed for turning HTML code into graphical web pages that are easy for you to read and use. You've probably heard of browsers like Netscape, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Safari. So what would it be like if you weren't using a browser? You wouldn't be seeing web pages like you're used to. In fact, they would just look like this. Just HTML source code. The same thing viewed through a web browser? Which would you rather use? Let's explore one of the most popular browsers used today, Microsoft Internet Explorer, often called IE for short. We'll start by taking a close look at Internet Explorer's interface. All the really handy menu options are located at the top of the page, along with toolbars for navigating through the web. Many of these features and symbols have become common across all web browsers and some non-browser applications. So, even if you're not using IE, things will probably look almost the same on whatever browser you're using. If you type a web address, also known as a URL, like http colon slash slash www.nortellearnit.com into the address field, and then hit return or click the go button, you're pointing your browser at a specific location, causing the website you requested to appear in your browser window. Makes sense, right? If the website you went to is displaying too much information for your display area, you may access the additional content by using the scroll bars found on the right hand side and along the bottom of the browser window. Just click and hold down the left mouse button and drag the scroll bar up or down. If you have a fancy mouse, use the scroll wheel. That's right, that's what the wheel is for. Fancy. One web page will be displayed at a time, but you can have a bunch of windows open at once. If you click on any hyperlinks, those are those words that are usually underlined, bold, or in a different color, depending on the web design you will jump to new content. The new page may open in your current browser window, or it may tell Explorer to open a brand new window. If you noticed, when you put the cursor over a hyperlink, in the bottom left area of your browser, it shows you the address of the page you will be going to. The basic functions of a web browser are very user-friendly. Like I mentioned, these symbols are quite common and used throughout the computing world. If you want to go back to the web page you were just viewing, you can click the back button in the menu bar to return to a previously viewed page. On the other hand, if you find that you have gone back too far, you can move forward by clicking the forward button and it will advance through the pages you've just backed up through. Here's a cool feature. If there's a specific website you visit a lot, you can set it as your home page. This means that when you first load Internet Explorer, it will automatically take you to this website without typing in the URL. Often, people choose home pages that offer useful information like news, weather updates, search options, or perhaps handy communication tools like email or their favorite discussion boards. Very handy. This can be accomplished by going to the menu bar, clicking Tools, and dragging down to Internet Options. Then, find the Home Page field and type in the address that you would like to use as your home page. Most browsers will offer you the option of selecting your current page as the home page. After surfing on the Internet for a while, 
You can always return to your home page simply by clicking the Home button on the main toolbar. Sometimes content on a web page updates itself. To check for updates, like new headlines on a news site, you click the Refresh button. It will reload the page currently in view. This is also handy if a page is loading slowly or not at all. Just hit the Refresh button to try again. The Search feature allows you to find websites about a specific topic by typing in keywords that describe what you are looking for. If you use this feature, you'll get a list of corresponding websites that match the criteria. Each URL or address that is displayed after conducting your search will be accompanied by a short description of the contents of the website, which you can click simply to access. These results are referred to as hits, and that's using a search engine. Remember, IE is a web browser, and a search engine, like Google or Yahoo, is a tool used from a browser to find pages. Now that you've found the website you're looking for, you may want to find something specific on that web page rather than read through all the content. Say you're looking at a really long document, but you don't want to read through it all when you're only looking for a quote about blueberries. If so, the Find tool will come in real handy. To find specific words within a certain body of a page, click on Edit, drag down, and click Find. Or, hold the Control key and press F. Enter any word or phrase that you are looking for, and click Find. The program automatically searches the web page, locating the matching key, word, or phrase. This is a great way to save time without having to read through the whole page. Once you've found some websites that you like, and might want to return to on a regular basis, you'll really like the Favorites tool. To remember and organize the websites you would like to return to at a later date, click Favorites and then Add to Favorites. The currently viewed website will then be added to a Favorites list. To revisit this site any time in the future, just click Favorites and drag down to that specific website. This is kind of like how you use a bookmark to remember your place in a book. Once you get hooked and start spending way too much time on the internet, you may want to consider organizing your favorite links using subfolders. That way, you can name your folders and sort your links into categories like work, shopping, sports, and news. To do this, click favorites in the menu bar, drag down to add to favorites, click create in, to add the URL to an existing folder, or click New Folder to create a new category. Oftentimes, you find you want to revisit a site that you've already viewed, but you didn't add to your favorites. The History tool allows you to access a list of all the sites you've visited for the past several weeks. This URL history can get really long, especially if you're surfing the web all the time, so don't be shocked when you have a lot to sort through to find what you want. But hey, at least it'll be in there for you. To use the History function, click on the History button, just right of the Favorites button. Locate the domain name of the site you need, and a folder will open, allowing you to choose the specific page you want at that website. This is really helpful if you can't remember the web address of the site you visited two days ago or last week. This is also a way for other users to see what you have been surfing, so be aware that at school or in a shared office, anyone after you can view the history of the pages you visited, so surf wisely. Another quick way to see recent sites is to use the drop-down arrow to the far left of the address bar. Voila! All your recent sites appear. In this Internet Explorer overview, we've highlighted some key features Internet Explorer offers. If you still have some questions once you start surfing the World Wide Web, refer to the Help menu and access the free, in-depth guides to the software. And remember that pretty much every browser out there has the same basic features, even if they might be called something a bit different. You can use one, you can use them all. Now that you know the basic skills for using a browser, you're ready to start surfing. So get to it, and I'll see you on the web.
or, well, no, I, I probably won't, but the web's a pretty big place. 